get out of here. It's too dangerous. Go get someone from the Skyfaring Commission. Tell them Ching Ni is in trouble. No, it's too late to call for backup. Don't worry, Miss Ching Ni. The Skyfaring Commission sent us to help. Too many monsters. Let's hold out for a little longer. The Cloud Knights should be here soon. Just run! These monsters can't get up here anytime soon. No can do, Miss Chingni. We're not abandoning you. Easy. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. You two have held out long enough. Help is at hand! Cloud Knight, formation! Prepare to engage! Hold on, King Me! We're coming to get you! Survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. That's better. No. 
survive or be destroyed. There is no other choice. I didn't know the Hellmaster of the Skyfaring Commission dealt with situations like this in person. Indeed. I should be reviewing files in the Palace of Astrum. However, Ching Ni decided to put herself in danger and trouble our esteemed guests with her safety. As her mother, I couldn't sit idly by. Ching Ni, have you thanked your benefactors yet? Thank you, benefactors. No need, Miss Ching Ni. It was nothing. You flatter me. This is a Skyfaring Commission affair, yet the two of you had to put yourselves in harm's way. I am ashamed. It was because of both of you that Ching Ni escaped unscathed. Words cannot express my gratitude. In fact, by way of thanks, I'd like to invite you to the Palace of Astrum for tea. It is about time we knew each other better. The feeling is mutual, Lady Yukong. We would be honored. Then, for now, I will excuse myself. Ching Ni's irresponsible actions caused much trouble for the two of you. Allow me to apologize once again on her behalf. Ugh, you always do this, Mother. Scold me before figuring out what actually happened. It was a dire situation. I was the only one who could... You promised me, Ching Ni. We shall discuss this when we return. Please excuse us, benefactors. I look forward to our meeting. I didn't know Yukong had that side to her. You have a unique way of putting things. But you're not wrong. Appearances seemingly tell us little about the lives of the Sienjo's leaders, no matter how long those lives may have been. Yukong's inner worries and concerns came to the surface in the presence of her daughter. Only then was it clear that she, too, is somebody's mother. Yes, after all, I know what it's like to worry over a kid's homework, and whether their lunch is healthy enough. But there's something I don't understand. Yes, Ching Ni piloted a star skiff without permission and put herself in danger, but she meant well. Nevertheless, Yu Kong's reaction suggests that there was something more. Anyway, let's head over to the Palace of Astrum. Best not to keep you calm waiting. Uh, let's avoid sudden exclamations like that once we're in the palace. Remember, this is no field trip. We're having tea with the Helm Master of the Skyfaring Commission. We'll need to act with diplomatic decorum. All right, let's head out before it gets late. The next destination, up to you. Why won't you listen to me? Because it's my life! You know I have the talent to make it. I can become the Lafu's best pilot, just like you were. Talent? You'd be dead if it weren't for those two travelers. Do you think stealing a star skiff and taking to the skies is a show of talent? What about being trapped by abominations? Did you at any moment think about what I would feel if something happened to you? Do you know how many people dream of a relaxing desk job at the Skyfaring Commission? You promised me to work responsibly in your post. Not only have you broken the Skyfaring Commission's regulations, You've broken your promise to me! I already told you! I had no choice! I want to help you and the Skyfaring Commission! 
not sit at my desk dealing with never-ending papers. That job doesn't suit me. I got the highest grade in the fighter pilot test. They all said I was a genius like you, like mother, like daughter. They were all jealous of me. But no one even knew I had to take the test behind your back. You would never have allowed me to go if I told you about it. Behind my back? Do you really think you could have walked into the test and sat in the cockpit if I hadn't given my permission behind the scenes? As for genius, don't mention that word to me again. Why do you insist on becoming a pilot? I don't understand. And I don't understand why you don't understand. Why can anyone in the world become a fighter pilot except the Hellmaster's daughter? Don't you realize how ridiculous that is? You may not want to fly anymore, but don't trap me down here with you. Ching Ni, where are you going? <sighs> I'm sorry you had to witness this. Apologies, Madam Yukong. We should have given you some time. You're right. An oversight on my part. On the contrary. I apologize for allowing my own personal matters to encroach on your time. We don't intend to pry into private business, Helmmaster Yukong. But if there's anything we can help with, please don't hesitate to ask. Family issues, I'm afraid. You probably heard a thing or two just now. Despite my earnest wish that she continue in her post, Ching Ni is fixated on becoming a fighter pilot. I may seem overpairing, but the situation she gets herself into sent a shiver up my tail. It's funny, isn't it? I've seen every disaster imaginable, from the Abundance Axis to a living planet. I thought I'd forgotten fear was. But when I fought alongside you, I realized there are still things that can terrify me. I'm sorry. Talking about such vexing matters is unbecoming in front of guests. I invited you here to gain a better understanding of the Express, not bore you with these trivialities. Oh, I prepared refreshments for you. Please, you must try this excellent whale tide spring. Please accept these gifts as thanks for saving my daughter. I had heard that the Nameless had traversed the Starry Sea, but I wasn't prepared for how much I could learn from you. Well, I'd heard from members of the Skyfaring Commission that you were a top-tier pilot, Madam Yukong, and an ace among the Cloud Knights. Now that I've seen you in action, I know the rumors were true. I hope to witness your flying ability for myself one day. We'll head off now. The Commission must be busy. I look forward to our next meeting, Madam Yukong. <laughs> On my flying ability, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you, Mr. Yang. The sky no longer suits me. You two, please, wait! Thank you for saving me, benefactors. And I'm sorry you had to witness all that. So you've experienced it yourself, benefactor. That's great. I, I mean, I'm happy I finally found someone who can understand me. But I've had the hairpin ceremony. I'm an adult now. I have the right to pursue my dreams. Mom still insists on sheltering me under her wing. 
as if I can't even stay alive without her. <clears throat> uh, Miss Chingni, these are family matters. I'm not sure it's my place to comment. However, in my personal experience, becoming a parent often means we become obstinate. To erode a rock, one must be patient and persistent, like water. What I mean to say is, instead of trying to prove yourself suddenly, perhaps you could demonstrate your ability to look after yourself methodically, over time. Don't you think, Miss Chingy? My mom is actually a reasonable person, but she gets unreasonable as soon as I mention flying. She hid my Starskiff toys, dragged me away from the port when I stayed behind to count ships, forced me to study for ages. I did everything I could to work my way into the Skyfaring Commission, but she used her authority to assign me a desk job. <sighs> Every time I walk along Starwatcher Avenue and look up at those ships flying freely across the sky, I feel empty inside. <laughs> Speaking of empty inside, so how were mom's refreshments? Good? <sighs> I've been so angry today I forgot to eat anything. <laughs> How about this? My mom thanked you guys with refreshments, so I should do the same. Let me take you around Starskiff Haven. We can try the most authentic snack on the Lafu. About the most authentic snack on the Cien de la Fu is it's a drink and it's inside this vending machine. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't have the money for anything fancy. Here, mung bean soda, one can each. This thing has a bit of a unique flavor, but I love it. Let me try. Hmm. A nostalgic experience. Oh! Is there a drink like this where you're from? No, no. This reminds me of when I first boarded the Express and forced myself to drink Himiko's coffee and how my taste buds never fully recovered. Uh, how is it? Bearable? Whoa! <laughs> I've never met a traveler who could down a mung bean soda like that. But I guess not everyone can accept what I like. <sighs> Just like flying. Well, don't force yourself. Let's go somewhere else. <gasps> Ooh, I know a really great place in Starskiff Haven to Starskiff watch. You know, there are a lot of mung bean soda moments in life. If you don't try, you won't know. Unique experiences are often a product of risky choices. <laughs> Tell that to my mom. Her number one life lesson is, you can't turn back once you enter the sky. Pilots are always dancing with death. 
I know she's right. I know being a fighter pilot is an exhausting and dangerous job. But I still want to fly among the stars. To fight for the Sienjo Alliance across the vast galaxy. Why are you so dedicated to that idea, Miss Chingney? Have you heard of the Foxy and Birth Fate tradition? Soon after a child is born, we surround them with items that represent future destinies. If the child reaches for a Jade Abacus, then they'll grow up to be a Diviner. If they reach for a sword, then they'll grow up to be a famous warrior. And if they reach for a toy star skiff, What? No! It means they'll become a pilot. Mom reached for the star skiff and showed a natural talent for flying. General Jing Yuan recruited her to the Cloud Knights as soon as she was old enough. That's how she became a fighter pilot. Later, she achieved miracles. One time, she destroyed three beast ships in a hail of recent anti-aircraft fire. Like an arrow tearing through a thunderstorm. She also holds the Skyfaring Commission records for speed and enemy vessels destroyed. I'm proud to be Madame Yukong's daughter. I wanted to become a legend like her for as long as I can remember. I can imagine. A parent is often a child's first hero, and their image can influence their whole life. <sighs> she never told me any of those stories herself. And she hasn't piloted a star skiff since the third Denizens of Abundance War. She doesn't even bring up her military achievements. I used to watch her fly when I was young. <laughs> then one time, I stole a star skiff and I tried all kinds of difficult maneuvers. Turns out I was as talented as she was. Not only did I survive the flight, my landing was perfect. I remember feeling so happy when they took me to see my mom. There I was boasting about the flight, expecting her to laugh, pat my head, say that's my girl, or something. But boy, I've never seen her so scary. <laughs> I admit, I deserve to be punished. You can't let a kid get away with stealing a star skiff. But my mom was angry about more than that. She was angry because I viewed her as a role model. Because I had the same talent as her. I don't understand it. Parents never want their children to be in danger. I think I can understand, Madame Yukong. But flying is the only thing I want to do. I've already touched the sky. It's Mom's secretary, Miss Sequay. She just sent me a message. Mom lost one of her trinkets in Stargazer Navalia when she came to save me. Miss Sequay suggested I find the trinket and return it to Mom. Said it might help me get back in her good books. In Stargazer Navalia? Hmm. Let's go with you and have a look. Is it really okay to bother you two again? <sighs> uh, sorry, <laughs> please don't mention the Mung Bing Soda again. <laughs>